Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today we've got a pretty interesting video. This is kind of thought provoking. So put on your thinking caps and go with me here. I hope you're having a great night, by the way, wherever you're at. Here in Colorado, the air quality is abysmal. We've got all these wildfires and it is really hard to breathe outside. It's terrible. And the only good side is it's a great excuse to stay inside and play with your records. So that's really cool. Um, I hope you're having a good time. You're safe. Everybody's good wherever you're at and whenever you're watching this. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about two things. 45 RPM, 12-inch records, and the fact that records slow down as you play them. So if you're new to vinyl, you this may bring up more questions than it answers. If you've been around the block for a while, then you'll probably be, you know, two steps ahead of me like you usually are. But for those of you that have never thought about it, it's pretty pretty interesting. So first of all, I want to talk about this. So this is a 12-inch 45 RPM record. As you know, here in the U.S., uh, most records that are 45 RPM have the large hole, although in the U.K., 7-inch records that are 45 have the small hole, just like this LP right here, or just like this record right here. However, um, there are a number of 12 inch, sorry for my squeaky chair by the way, there are a number of 12 inch 45 RPM records. Now why would they do that? The short answer is they sound better. So it turns out that when a record rotates faster, the faster it spins, the louder it sounds. So the louder a record sound is going to create more of a dynamic range between the loudest loud and the and then the noise floor you know the sound of the stylus just dragging across the plastic dragging dragging across across the pvc so it gives you a higher quality sound that's why there are people that are into 45s big time and they they only collect 45s they consider it a premium format for that and many other reasons however there are limitations to a seven inch record like this um, one of them is they have higher outer groove distortion because the circle that they are making, the, the turn is a tighter radius in order to accommodate the size of the record. Second is when you have a record that is rotating, let's go ahead and rotate this one. This is where you kind of have to go with me. So this record is a having a continuous velocity. It never changes from its current speed, which is 45, or actually no, in this case it's 33. Let's make this accurate. This is a 45 RPM record. So let's flip it up to 45. So this thing is always gonna be rotating at 45 RPMs. And in the case of a 12 inch LP, it's gonna be rotating at 33 RPMs. Why is that? I still feel like that's the wrong speed. Bear with me here. Come on. That is not 45. Okay, it doesn't matter. You'll get the point. You'll get the point. So here's the thing about it. By having a 45 or a single on a full-size record like this, a couple of things happen. Actually, three things. One of those three things is the sound engineer can have wider grooves so you get less distortion and impact from neighboring grooves. Sometimes if they're crammed too tightly together, you get shadowing, foreshadowing. There's like a big drum hit. You'll hear that on the next groove before you even get there because it's pressing against the current groove. And so you'll hear a drum hit one rotation before you get there. And so little things like that can impact the quality of the sound in the groove. I, I apologize, this isn't a very visual video. We're mostly just talking here. Uh, so stare into the mesmerizing record as it rotates. But um, <laughs> the other thing is by having it on a 12 inch record versus a smaller seven inch record, you have less outer groove distortion because the sound or the uh, the uh, turn isn't as sharp. The turn isn't as tight. So the groove is a little bit straighter than it is on a smaller record. So that's two things. The third thing is when you have an LP, there is a slowdown that does occur. Even though the record itself doesn't change speeds, the stylus where it passes over the record changes its effective speed. In other words, when the stylus is right here, it is a certain number of inches per second are going under this. And people have calculated this. You know, there's a certain distance that is traversed per second, or however you measure it, under the stylus when it's on the outer side of the record. More media is passing. But when you go in here, 
there's less passing. It's slower because the closer you get to the center of the record, to the spindle, that physical plastic is rotating at a slower speed. It's faster out here than it is here and even more so than it is right here. Now that's kind of weird. How can that be if the record is only spinning at 33 RPMs or 45 RPM? How can that possibly be? This doesn't make any sense. Well, when it comes to analog media, whenever you have analog media, typically you have something touching something else. In this case, you have a stylus touching vinyl, uh, cassette tapes, you have magnetic tape passing over a tape head, whatever the case may be, when you have physical analog, or you have analog media, which is a physical contact, usually can be visual like laser discs, which actually have analog video, if you can believe it, and digital sound. But that's a separate story for a separate day. But typically, the more media that you pass through, the more of whatever it is, the more tape, the more record, the higher quality the sound, the more real estate there is to describe the fidelity of the music, if that makes any sense. So the music, the sound on this part of the record is going to be a higher quality, higher fidelity than it is on the inside. Now, even the innermost groove on this 12 inch record is further away than the innermost groove on a 45. So you're gonna get better fidelity on this with less inner groove distortion and more media passing under the stylus than you are on the inside. So what that means is that it's a premium thing. A 12 inch record, the sound on a 12 inch is a premium thing from that aspect. However, there are those diehard 45 people, they'll say, no, 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 this is better, it's moving faster and it's a more brittle, you know, there's different you know, characteristics to the vinyl that's used or the styrene that's used. But when you're talking about it from a from the main standpoint here, you gotta keep in mind that more media is better. And the way they made the, the best of both worlds here is you get a 12 inch disc, so there's less inner groove distortion, there's more media, and they're gonna spin it at 45 RPM. So you get that signal to noise ratio impact that's positive. So there you go, guys. That's how a record slows down, because it really does. You know, the record, the media that's passing under the needle here is faster than it is here. It's tr literally slower at this point than it is out here. And that's also why a 45 RPM 12 inch record exists. So one more thing, a little trivia, is that in the past, they would often put the hit songs, or the ones that they, you know, wanted to sound the best on the outside of an LP. And this is, I know, this is a 45, but imagine 12 inch LP doesn't look too much different than this. So the hit songs, the ones that they really want to sound the best are gonna be on the outside because by the time you get down here, multiple factors that we've just talked about impact the sound quality. So there you go, guys. That's a, that's a mind bender for you. And all the fact checkers, jump in there, verify me, tell me where I'm wrong. And I'm just teasing you guys. I just love the whole thing. So I learned so much from you guys. And you know, there are definitely, I have misstated things along the way and then I've corrected them. Everything that I say in my videos is correct as far as I know up to the point of making that video. And then if I learn something or when I do, I definitely correct it. But that's my understanding at this point and I think that's super cool. I think that's a very interesting thing. It deepens my curiosity about vinyl, about records. I just think it's really cool. So anyway, there you go guys. Kind of an intellectual, you know, a lot of talking, not a lot of showing, and my apologies for that, but hopefully you thought that was interesting. Anyway, if you give me a thumbs up, I would sure appreciate it. Share it out, and uh, we will see you tomorrow.